Well, Merry Christmas. I hope you had an incredible Christmas Eve and you're having an incredible Christmas day. And I just begin to think in these moments in time about the in-between moments of Christmas. In fact, I would like to start Christmas Day with you by reading the Christmas story to you. And it's really just what we talked about Christmas Eve last night or the night before here. And it comes from the book of Luke chapter 2, verse 1. It says, At that time the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quinarius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. I love the next part, the shepherds and the angels. I, I actually, a couple years ago, stood in this spot in Israel where this happened. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby. When it says nearby, it means nearby. Like, like they were literally a mile and a half down the hill guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said, I bring you good news. They'll bring great joy to all the people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you'll recognize him by this sign. You'll find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. And I love this moment because suddenly there's this host of angels that, that celebrate and they rejoice and, and there's gifts that are brought and, and they hurry on to this village and, and they find Mary and Joseph and there was Jesus, this baby, laying in a manger. By the way, they don't know he's Jesus yet. They know he's the Messiah. They don't know him by name. They just know he's the Messiah. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone, verse 17, what had happened, what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astounded, but Mary kept all these things in her heart, thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, because it was just as the angel had told them. And it's interesting because we, we just talked about that story Christmas Eve, just a day ago. But then I wonder about Christmas Day. What was the in-between like for a new mom and dad? that were staying kind of in the, the manger, the stall of the animals of a family member's home. I wonder if it was quiet, if it was peaceful. Mary is now adjusting to being a young mother. Joseph is in awe of being a dad, maybe a little freaked out. I wonder if things settled in for the next few days. They had family around them. They had people from the village. I'm sure a lot of people were trying to see this baby. But I wonder for a mom and a dad, what was the wonder and awe of that morning like? I think of my kids when they were little. I used to love Christmas morning. They would get up and uh, they would run into the living room or in our house in Ohio, they'd run downstairs and uh, they, would, they would see that there were gifts for them. And there was this wonder and this awe in their eyes, like just the, the wonder of a child. And I remember the first Christmases where we saw our children really understand what was going on. And there was this moment as a dad where I, I understand where Mary kept these things in her heart. Now my girls are grown. My oldest daughter, she's 18, she's in college, she's a freshman this year, she lives 1,900 miles away from us. My, my youngest daughter, she's 16, she's a sophomore in high school. My kids aren't the little, little girls I used to be. But every Christmas, I still have this wonder and this awe in my heart, remembering those moments. I see glimpses of it in my girls. Actually, one of my favorite Christmases. Actually felt like could have been the worst Christmas turned into the best. My youngest daughter, Natalie, she wanted to get baptized around Christmas time and we set it up at the church and she was gonna get baptized and then the day she was supposed to get baptized the night before, she got sick. She ended up in the hospital for like three days. And I remember the moment, like it was like, she's not gonna get to be baptized when she wanted to get baptized. And, and so we had to wait and we didn't know what was gonna happen. And, and as a dad, I was completely freaked out. My baby girl was in the hospital and I couldn't do anything about it. It was an in-between moment of her actual life and her new spiritual life. There was this in-between moment of uncertainty. 
There was an in-between moment of uncertainty for Joseph and Mary, but now they have their baby. My daughter Natalie, she got better. The next week, we came to church on Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve Eve, honestly, December 23rd, and she was baptized then. And I thought how apropos for my little girl who loves Christmas probably more than any other holiday, more than probably any other child, it's her favorite holiday. She decorates everything all the time for Christmas. And I saw new life in my baby girl, not just physical, but there was this emotional, this spiritual birth that took place in her, this joy that exuded out of my baby girl in that moment. And it was in this in-between that I remember the joy of my girl. The next couple of days, we just kind of reveled in her new birth in Christ as we reveled in the birth of Christ. And I remember that Christmas, every, every Christmas day, we, we bake a cake and we put candles on it and we sing happy birthday to Jesus. We've done it since the girls were little. And it's this in between moment, this after moment with our family on Christmas day. And as we sing and remember why we really celebrate this holiday, It's those moments where I begin to treasure seeing the wonder and awe in the eyes of my kids. I wonder about Mary, as she held her new baby boy, knowing that he was the Messiah, at least that's what she was told. I wonder if she questioned that. I wonder if she had moments of, is this real? I wonder if Joseph was the proud dad that was out in the community telling people, hey, come see my baby boy. So for the first seven days, they just have this moment, this in-between. We don't read about it. It's nowhere in scripture of what happened in those, those moments. But I wonder if it's like your day to day. I wonder if this moment that you're having right now with your family or with the people that you're surrounded with, I wonder if this is a moment that you'll etch in time and that you'll treasure in your heart. A moment where you remember, a moment where you're, you're in the midst of this, this period of nothingness, but everything at the same time. And then eight days later, Jesus is presented at the temple. Eight days later, when the baby was circumcised, this is when he was named Jesus. The name given him by the angel even before he was conceived. Then it was time for their purification offering, as required by the law of Moses after the birth of a child. So his parents took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. They took their first road trip eight days in. They they had a family road trip to Jerusalem, and it wasn't far, but it was far enough with an infant and no modern conveniences like we have. The law of the Lord says if a woman's first child is a boy, he must be dedicated to the Lord. So they offered the sacrifice required in the law of the Lord, either a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons, which by the way, those two offerings were the cheapest offerings they could give. They were poor. They didn't have a lot. They gave everything they could. And then there's this prophecy. And this is where Jesus goes from this baby of the in-between in these seven days after he's born to the prophecy. Verse 25, at that time there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was righteous and devout and was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him and he had revealed to him that he would not die until he saw the Lord's Messiah. That day the Spirit of the Lord led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby, He was there. And Simeon looked at the child and took him in his arms. And he praised God saying this, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace as you have promised. I've seen your salvation, which you've prepared for all people. He is a light to reveal God to the nations and he is the glory of your people, Israel. And I love verse 33. Jesus' parents were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed him And he said to Mary, the baby's mother, this child is destined to cause many in Israel to fall and many others to rise. He has been sent as a sign from God, but many will oppose him. As a result, the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your very soul. And again, Mary and Joseph find themselves in these moments of awe. They're awestruck by a prophecy about their son, one one of which I think they already kind of knew. I mean, the angel of the Lord revealed these things to them. And I wonder about you today. What are the things that God has in wonder and awe in your life right now? Maybe it's that he has completely redeemed your family. Maybe it's that he's completely transformed you this year. Maybe the greatest gift for some of you is that you were one of those baptized at one of our Christmas Eve services this year. 
Maybe for you, it's that you made the decision that you're going to be. You're gonna live a new life. You're gonna be redeemed, restored, and recovered. But right now in the in-between, you're waiting for your name. You're waiting for that moment. You're waiting for what is it, God, that you have for me next? Can I tell you what I think God really wants from each of us this Christmas? It's just simply to be obedient. To say, God, we will do and be whoever and whatever it is you want us to be. That is a family, that is an individual, that is a mom, a dad, a kid, someone that's dating, someone that's engaged, someone that's single, it, it doesn't really matter that you're gonna be the person that God has created you to be. And so this Christmas, as you sit in the in-between between now and a new year, what is it that God is calling you to be obedient towards? So I wanna pray for us, and then we're gonna to commune together, uh, and then we're gonna have some offering together, and then this is what I want you to do today. I want you to rest in the in-between. Let's pray. Father, today, God, I'm so thankful for what this moment in time represents. God, that as we open your word, as we read about these in-between moments, as we, as we can wonder what it was like for mom and dad with a new baby that was the Messiah. God, that maybe inside of us, we could have the same wonder and awe right now, that we could have an in-between that, that maybe nobody else sees, but we know you see. And God, that as we prepare in the in-between for what's to come next, God, my prayer is, is that what comes next in our life is transformation, redemption, hope, and obedience. God, that we would just simply be the people that you call us to be, that God, this Christmas, that we would receive the gift of Jesus, but God, it would be a gift that keeps on giving. God, that we would take that gift that we've received and give it to the world around us that we would deal hope everywhere we go. God, that we would, we would use this in between, between now and the new year to set the stage for what's to come. That we will serve a savior that came into this world to redeem and restore us. God, I thank you that we can be with family, that we can be with friends, that we can be with you. And God, I pray that this Christmas, the greatest gift we receive is not something that's been under a tree or unwrapped but something that was given to us in all of eternity in your son, Jesus. God, we love you, and it's your name we pray today. Amen. Well, I hope you were able to get your juice and your bread. And I'm always struck at Christmas time of why Jesus was born. Like we celebrate this baby, we, we celebrate the manger, the strips of cloth, like all the things that come with a baby, baby smell, new baby smell, but we forget that he came for a purpose. And that purpose wasn't just to be born, but that purpose was actually to die for you and me. That he was gonna be born into this world, he was gonna die, and then he was gonna actually resurrect to new life. And, and I'm always struck at Christmas when we take communion that sometimes we forget that the reason he was born was so that he could die for us. And so today, as you take your communion, and I, I don't know what you have, I have our, our wonderful Pantano uh, communion that sometimes I know you wrestle with on Sunday mornings, right? Um, but that was really easy to open, by the way, probably easier than you've ever had on a Sunday. Um, but as you open up or as you get your juice, as you get your bread, I would challenge you today that in this moment, even though we celebrate this gift of Jesus being born, that more than that, we would celebrate today in our communion, that we would confess that we're not all that we should always be, and we've not always been obedient to what God has called us to, but in this moment, that we would be thankful that we had a God that was willing to send a son to not only be born for us, but to die for us, so that we would live eternally. So at this time as a family, I would encourage you, go ahead and take your elements, and let's commune together. Let me pray for us. Father, today, again, we thank you that your son was not just born for us, but was born with the, with the mission to, to die for humanity. God, to bleed for us, to, to be broken for us, but also to resurrect for us, to show us what new life could mean. God, we're so thankful for this time to remember not just what was done a couple thousand years ago in the birth of your son, but what was done in the death of your son to restore and redeem us. God, we love you. It's in your name that we pray these things today. Amen. Now, last thing. You have an opportunity today to be generous. 
we've talked about generosity a lot around here. We've been super generous through the holidays. I'm so thankful for each and every one of you because one, we were able to bless five people this holiday with the best Christmas ever. If you were at any of our services over Christmas Eve, you got to experience that. Or maybe you gave to our, our Christmas Eve initiative for Feed My Starving Children, and we're gonna pack half a million meals in February because of your generosity. But today, maybe you wanna make an end of your gift to Pantano and the furthering of the kingdom. All the stuff that you're a part of, all the stuff that you experience, that doesn't happen without your generosity, and we're very thankful for you. In fact, I couldn't be more thankful to be a part of a church that has a legacy of generosity that each and every one of you bring. So if you wanna give towards what the kingdom work is that we're doing here at Pantano, there's gonna be a link right at the bottom and you can text to whatever that link is right there on the bottom of the screen and you can give right there today. I hope you have a great rest of your Christmas. Hope you have a great new year as we get ready to shift into what God has in store for us in 2023. And I hope that you have an incredible day with your family and friends. Merry Christmas. Thank you.